Okay, so today's video is all about a thrifted recipe. I asked you in a video here recently if you would be interested in seeing me do some thrifted recipes. And what I mean by that is I love to thrift books and recipe books is one of my favorite things to try to thrift. So I thought it would be fun to do a little series here on my channel of basically like thrifted recipes because we are taking recipes out of a thrifted book. So I'm gonna bring y'all along. We're gonna pick a recipe today. I'm gonna show you the process of fixing everything and then give you a review at the end of what not only I thought, but what my family thought as well. So let's get busy making today's recipe. I hope that y'all enjoy this. Let me know if y'all do end up liking this and it does really well on YouTube and it's getting shared and things like that. I will probably continue to do it, but I would like to do it for about a month and just see how it does. So let me know down below if this is something that you enjoy after watching today's video. All right, so for today's recipe, we're gonna be using this Better Homes and Garden cookbook. It is the, I believe 1989 version. Yes, 1989. I thrifted this. Honestly, I can't remember if it was a Goodwill or where it was, but it is thrifted. And so I decided to not to go along with our spaghetti that I wanted to try these cheese twists. So I'm going to go along with you the recipe. I'm going to change up a little bit because we are not doing this exactly up here. We're going to be doing the herbed Parmesan twist down here at the bottom. Uh, so that's what we're going to start working on. I've got all my ingredients out over here. And let's see, we've got some Parmesan, Italian seasoning, an egg, some Redmond sea salt, the butter that I use, shredded cheddar, all-purpose flour, and some garlic powder. And as you can see over here, I've got the spaghetti going. I've got the meat and the onion with all the seasonings in it. And I'm about to put all my tomato sauces and diced tomatoes, a little bit of tomato paste, and some Italian seasoning in there and I like for mine to simmer for a couple of hours really low um, I wish I had some home canned spaghetti sauce canned up but I don't so I'm gonna go with this and just kind of make my own spaghetti sauce tonight I'm making a double batch I have two pounds of ground meat and then I'm adding two of everything because I'm gonna freeze one batch so the next time I want spaghetti my sauce is already done and I just have to pull it out of the freezer so that's what we're working on over here getting the spaghetti going all right, so let's get started on the recipe. It says the first thing you need is one cup of all-purpose flour and in a large mixing bowl, it says to combine your flour. So there's our one cup of flour, one fourth teaspoon garlic powder. My garlic powder here, I just keep it in a mason jar. I get mine from Azure Standard, in case you're wondering. So one fourth teaspoon garlic powder going in. And then one eighth teaspoon of salt. Where's my salt? Right here. I'm going to be using this um, Redmond salt. I really like it. Has all the minerals still in it. It's very good for you. So I'm going to do the one eighth teaspoon of salt there. Now it's getting to the where it calls for red pepper, but we are not using the red pepper because we're doing the herbed Parmesan twist. And it says if you're doing the herbed Parmesan twist to um, X the red pepper. So we're going to skip that step. Now it says you need one cup finely shredded cheddar or American cheese and I have cheddar. So in the bowl it says to mix your flour, your garlic, your salt, and if desired the red pepper, would, but we're not. And now we need to cut in the cheese. So I'm going to put my one cup of cheddar in here and get it cut in. And I'm just going to use my, um, I think this is, um, I can't remember what this is called, but it's for, for pastry and like cutting things in like that. So it just says cut in the cheese and the margarine. I'm going to go ahead and just cut the cheese in a little bit, kind of stir it around before I do the butter. I find it mixes a little better if I do that. So I'm just going to cut this in real quick. All right. And then I'm going to do one fourth cup of butter. I use real butter. I do not use margarine. So I'm just going to cut off where my one fourth is. I've already kind of scored a line and it does not say, I mean, it's saying to cut in this cheese and the butter. So I'm assuming that this butter needs to stay cold. So I'm going to try to work as quick as I can and not handle it with my hands too much. I probably should have got a cutting board. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to cut it into some smaller pieces because I feel like it'll be 
easier to kind of mix in. It says you want to cut it in until it's pea size, which is why it made me think that it did not need to be um, melted or anything. So if you've ever made biscuits, you know that it wants everything to be cold or pie crust. So let's just cut this in until I get some pea size. Let's see, make sure. Yeah, cut in cheese and margarine or butter till pieces are the size of small peas. You might hear Elizabeth talking in the background. She's in there FaceTiming one of her friends. All right, so I'm just gonna cut this in real quick until it's the size of small peas. Okay, now it says sprinkle one tablespoon of water over part of the mixture and gently toss it with a fork Push it to the side and repeat until all the flour mixture is moistened. It calls for three to five tablespoons of cold water, so I guess we will just do one at a time. I just put some water in here because I didn't see any point in getting out another dish. So, oh wait, I'm supposed to push stuff to the side. Hold on. Push some of it to the side. And then drizzle this over half the mixture. And stir with a fork. Just sprinkle one tablespoon of water over part of the mixture and gently toss it with a fork. Okay, so that's what we did. Push it. Oh, well, we were supposed to push this to the side of the bowl, not this. My bad. All right, repeat till all the flour mixture is moistened, and then we're going to shape the dough into a bowl. So let me just start, do this side with another tablespoon of water. So that's two tablespoons so far. So why would you have to, I don't know. I don't know why you wouldn't just... What's the point of the whole pushing it to the side? I don't understand that. So that was two tablespoons. So here we go with three. Normally when I make spaghetti, I make some homemade breadsticks that are like, y'all, they are so good. Elizabeth's probably going to ask if I made those because she loves those so much. They're like better than Olive Garden. I'll have to share that with y'all one day. But um, I wanted to try these. I'm trying to do some recipes out of my thrifted cookbooks and so this sounded really good to go with the spaghetti all right so there's three tablespoons i feel like it still needs another one so we're going to sprinkle in another tablespoon so there's four i mean it's getting there but i still think it needs that fifth tablespoon so i'm going to go ahead and sprinkle that fifth tablespoon. Toss it with a fork. And then we're going to shape it into a ball is what it says. Okay, so this is the point also in the recipe where it says if you're not doing the red pepper and you're making the herbed Parmesan twist that you're going to add, let's see, what does it say? It says add one fourth teaspoon of oregano to this mixture, but I don't have just oregano. I have an Italian seasoning mix that I get. So I'm going to add a little under a fourth of that because this is some pretty strong stuff. So maybe an eighth. I don't know. I'm going to just kind of sprinkle it over because I don't want it to be so strong. I'm going to do a little bit. Okay, I guess I'll do a little bit more. Okay. So there's our oregano substitute. <laughs> the Italian seasoning. And now it just says form into a ball. All right, I'm just going to lay down a piece of parchment paper and get this in the shape of a ball. So I'm just taking everything, trying to get everything out of here. I don't want to leave any of this goodness in the bowl. None of this cheese or butter or nothing. It's all good stuff. So I'm going to try to grab all of that out, get some of the sticky side and just push it down. And a lot of times you can pick up the extra. All right, that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to just shape it into a ball here. Okay, so it says to put it on a lightly floured surface. So I'm going to just sprinkle some of my flour on here. And then it says to flatten it with your hands. Roll out dough from center to edges forming a 10 inch square. So if I want this to be square, I need to try to make it square. All right, let me get a rolling pin real quick. All right, getting to use all of my little thrifted vintage pieces. The bowl that I used was thrifted from Goodwill. This is thrifted, so I'm just using all of the fun thrifted things to make my thrifted recipe. All right, so now it says to roll out dough from center to edges forming a 10 inch square. So I'm just going to guess my 10 inches. I don't want them to be too flat and 
trying really hard to make this be square. All right, it says brush with a beaten egg. It really, it was really painful to crack this egg to do this right here, just so y'all know. Our chickens are laying eggs, but I try to save each one for, <laughs> I don't know, just, there's my rooster in the background. All right, so I'm just gonna brush this with this mixture. And I have an egg white saved in the refrigerator from chocolate chip oatmeal recipe I did yesterday. So if I have any of this left over, I'm just gonna add it to that. And we can add this to our scrambled eggs in the morning. I am not wasting this. See, cause that's a, that's a lot of egg left over. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna be saving this. Okay, and here's where it says to top with the sesame seed or the poppy seed, but we're not using that either because we're doing the herbed Parmesan twist. So I'm just going to be using some of this Parmesan cheese. And I need two tablespoons of this. Where did my tablespoon measure go? One tablespoon. I'm sorry y'all, but real cooks use their hands. I'm sorry, they just it's just hard to be in the kitchen and not use your hands. Okay. All right, so there's our Parmesan cheese sprinkled all along. It says to cut strips in half inch strips. But I'm also going to probably just do them a little bigger. Cause it's just Larry, Elizabeth, and myself tonight. So I don't want them to be that little. <laughs> I'm gonna do them about, I don't know, about an inch. We'll see what happens. Sometimes you can just adjust and do your own thing. You use the recipes as a guide, but you don't always have to follow them exact, if you know what I mean. If you're a seasoned cook, if you've been in the kitchen for a while, sometimes you can play around with these things. And but you know what? This one looks really wide here on the end. So I think I will cut that one in half. My phone's going off. I think I'll leave that one. All right, and so now it just says twist each strip. It says to put it on a greased baking sheet, but we're just gonna use this piece of parchment paper because why throw it away? Now it says twist each strip. So let's see if I can figure out how to do this. So we're just going to twist each strip like so. Hope y'all could see that. So I'm just gonna take it and there's like no rising or you know no rise time or anything like that that's why i wanted to make this tonight so i didn't have to i had a lot of other things going on i was working on a few projects and that way i didn't have to fuss with the you know rising stuff and you know just doing all that that you have to do when you make a yeast type recipe so this was pretty simple i must say so i'm excited to try it so we're just gonna twist these and then I'm gonna get them in a, it says a 400 degree oven, but y'all, my oven is very small. It's one of those in the wall, old school. It, it's, it's been around a while and it gets really hot really fast. Um, and it cooks really hot. So I'm probably gonna cook mine on about 350-ish and maybe just cook it a little longer. My twist is coming undone. <laughs> get over there. All right, so I'm gonna take and put these. They're not beautiful, but I'm gonna put them in the oven and then we're gonna taste them and let y'all know what we think about this thrifted recipe. Okay, I'm about to put these in the oven. I was just looking over the recipe really quickly to make sure and see how long to cook it for. Y'all, it says these. this is supposed to make 40. This is supposed to make 40 cheese twist, y'all. Look how many I have. How in the world was that recipe supposed to make 40 twist okay so maybe i was supposed to cut these like uh, it said half inch <laughs> half inch strips i still don't even think cutting half inch strips would have made 40 of these that's crazy but anyway i got one two three four five six i got seven <laughs> but anyway i'm gonna put them in the oven and i'll let y'all know in just a minute okay they are finished i just pulled them <clears throat> excuse me oh i'm getting a scratchy throat I just pulled them out of the oven about i don't know five to seven minutes ago I wanted them to kind of cool off and y'all I had to look at the recipe again because I thought are these supposed to be like crisp twist 
did I do something wrong? So here's what the bottom looks like. They don't all look that brown. Well, I guess they do. Um, but y'all, they are not my favorite. I've already tasted one, like half of one, just because I wanted to taste it. But mm, I will not, I will probably not be making these again. But that doesn't mean they're bad. It is just not my favorite, especially for like a garlic bread sort of to go with spaghetti kind of thing. No, maybe as like an appetizer to dip in something, yes. But they are just, they're just eh. <laughs> but it was fun to try something new. And I think they actually might be good too, like dipped in the spaghetti sauce so that it could kind of soak this up. I mean, they're not hard. They look really like they're hard, but let me get where I can the inside. They're not terrible. They're just not my favorite. And I know my family's probably gonna say the same thing because they're used to those big fluffy yeast <laughs> garlic bread sticks I usually make that are better than Golf Garden, they say. So I'll definitely come back and let y'all know what they say once they have some. And I wanna try it dipped in like the marinara sauce, um, the spaghetti sauce, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But this just kind of reminds me of an appetizer type thing but if you are not a real big on bread and you just like a little bit of something this might be this just might be your thing but anyway let me get our uh, spaghetti all finished get it dished up and then let you know what the rest of the family thought okay so I have Elizabeth in the background she doesn't want to be on camera but Elizabeth what do you think about the um, cheese twist they're definitely thin <laughs> I told them it would not be your favorite because you're used to those that I make like from Olive Garden or whatever. I don't have any bag. They just taste weird. She described it as that they taste like pizza crust. Alright, so I'm going to make my plate and then I'll let y'all know what Larry thinks and what I think after eating it with my meal. All right, so now I'm gonna ask Larry what he thinks. He had to come in and he'd come in and eat later than we did because he was outside messing with chickens. So what do you think about the, hold on, let me turn the TV off in the background. Okay, sorry, I forgot about the TV going. All right, honest opinion, what do you think about those? <laughs> Can y'all tell we didn't really They're care for? They're kind of hard. They're kind of hard, yes, so. You heat them up a little bit, makes them a little softer. Did you dip them in the sauce at all? Well, I mean, you put the sauce. Yeah. It's just, they're kind of hard. Not our favorite. Kind of like a crunchy pizza, crust of pizza or something. Okay, so my, this is this is how I'm describing them. They, and Elizabeth said, I think I told you earlier, she says they remind her of pizza crust. They remind me of the crust off of some garlic bread that you would like buy at the store. You know, like the Texas toast kind we used to get. They kind of taste like that. Okay, what did y'all think? I will be telling you the truth when I make these recipes. So if we did not really like it or care for it, I will tell you that. If we really loved it and enjoy it, I will tell you that too. Some recipes are winners, some are not. Today's was just kind of a eh, <laughs> but maybe the next video, maybe the next recipe we make will be a lot better. Who knows? But anyway, thank y'all so much for spending some time with me in the kitchen today. We hope that y'all have a wonderful week. We love y'all and I'll see you really soon with a brand new video. Mm -hmm.